Hello everyone, this is Diamond Dustification again from YouTube. Uh, this video is going to be quick. It was inspired by my brother in Christ, Mr. Christian. I'm going to show you some rapture verses. Uh, before I get to that though, I wanted to tell you that if you're new to my channel or not, make sure you go in and you check out my playlist as I have everything neatly organized and I'm going to keep it that way for the remainder of this channel's lifespan, which is going to be hopefully until the, the rapture happens. Uh, I made a new playlist called Evangelism, where I'm going to be answering questions about how to how to respond to atheists when they say ask you questions like, what is sin? Why does God send people to hell? Or even Christians when they ask, why is sin bad for you? What is, what is it exactly? And, and stuff like that. What is sanctification? What does it mean to be born again? I'm going to start answering questions like that. I got a lot of rapture uh, videos in there. I talk about lukewarm Christianity. I talk about... Um, pre-tribulational rapture views and, and proofs and stuff like that. I talk about the virgins, the ten virgins, and how that doesn't prove a partial rapture, that garbage there. The partial rapture is garbage. And, um, yeah, so make sure you always go to my uh, playlist and you check that out. Uh, there's two One Saved, Always Saved playlists. Uh, you'll know which one is mine because it's isolated to just my videos. The other one, I have, like, a, an assortment of good preachers in there that I like to listen to from time to time, and, yeah... So let's get started. The context here is that I want to show you that what the, the post-tribulationists and mid-tribulationists say that God does, is not going to take us away from the tribulation because he wants us to endure is false. There's a, there's a big difference between what we're living in today and what the tribulation is. The tribulation is God's wrath, which we are not appointed to, okay? And we are going to be spared that. And I'm going to read you these verses verbatim. So that you can see what they say. Now this is in Hebrews. By faith. By faith Enoch was translated. That he should not see death. And was not found. Because God had translated him. For Before his translation he had this testimony. That he pleased God. Now some people will say that proves that we got to live this holy life. And that we can't make any mistakes. And that we have to repent of every sin. Which is impossible by the way. And I'm not telling you not to repent. You know, you should try to live for God as best you, as you can and yield to the Holy Spirit. But the reason we please God is because we have Jesus Christ's righteousness imputed onto us, okay? It has nothing to do with us. We don't please God in the flesh. We please him when we believe in Jesus Christ and then his love is shed abroad in our hearts, okay? Living for God is something that comes after and we should indeed pursue that, all right? So let's take a look at some of the verses that Mr. Christian pointed out and a few that I have. One thing, this is Psalms 27, 4 through 5. One thing I have, have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the seeker of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock in the time of trouble. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that the rapture is said to occur at a certain time period? I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, that which shall come upon the whole, on all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. Isn't that interesting? Now, I know some people are going to say that he's talking about specific troubles in his life, isolated incidents. But it makes more sense to view this, especially with Hebrews 11 on top of that. That it's talking about that coming hour. That it's a shadow of the rapture to come. But let's keep going. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. So they're not calamities isolated. There are calamities that are occurring around him. Isn't that interesting? I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Salah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Who's going to swallow us? The dragon. Satan. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right here. Revelations 12, 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child. 
as soon as it was born. Interesting. Isaiah 57, 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it, layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Isn't that interesting? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God the Father do not want us to be here during the time of the tribulation. It is a pouring out of wrath and destruction that is going to come upon the whole world. We're not going to be isolated into some little hamlet somewhere. We are going to be kept from the very hour of that time to come. It is the tribulation saints that are going to have to endure. They are the elect of the tribulation. Okay? It's not us. It's not talking about us. There's elect in the Old Testament, elect in the New Testament. There's elect angels, and there's going to be elect in the tribulation. It doesn't infer that the church must be present. Okay? Psalms 83. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. That against thy hidden ones. Now, Mr. Christian pointed out here that those in the tribulation that take the mark of the beast as well as the beast itself will be blaspheming those who are in heaven at this point. We, why are we hidden and how are we hidden? Does God shut us up in some closet somewhere or are we hidden in heaven? Are we up there in heaven, exalted? Hmm? And something to consider, especially in the face of the other verses I've showed you. Now let's take a look at Zephaniah 2, 1 through 3. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye, sh ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So there's the context hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Well, where are we going to be hid? We know that, like I said, we're kept from the hour of temptation, not from the trials of temptation. In order to be kept from a time period, you can't be present wherever that time period is going to take place. And where's the tribulation going to take place? The whole world. So we can't be hidden off in some little hamlet somewhere. You understand? And then we take a look at Job. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth, giveth up the ghost. And where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not wake, nor be raised out of their sleep. O oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me secret, until th thy wrath be past. That thou wouldst, wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Interesting. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to work to the work of thine hands. For now thou numberest my steps. Dost thou not watch over my sin? My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up my inequity. Now let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians 4. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again on the third day, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And Job was beseeching God to raise him up before the wrath, the day of wrath. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The relevance here, it does not mean that Job was, was screaming out to be raised up at the day of judgment, because while that is a certainly a wrathful day against those unbelievers, the day of wrath is the beginning of the tribulation. If we look at Revelation 6, it says very clearly, Revelation 6, 17, For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? You understand? And then I came up with Jeremiah 17, 8.
For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh. Tribulation is often referred to as a refining, a time of refining the, the gold and the silver. It's also a time of beating down the wheat and separating the chaff. Interesting. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. We're not going to see when the heat cometh? Now you can look at the context of this chapter and say oh, it doesn't have anything to do with that. But you have to remember that there are shadows of the rapture all throughout the New and Old Testament. Now a shadow means it's something that points towards the rapture, kind of like Psalms pointed towards Jesus is coming. That is Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my mouth? Or from the words of my roaring? David wrote this. Looking ahead. So this is a shadow of Jesus' crucifixion. In the same way that these verses can be shadows of the rapture. Now it is true that we have to be careful not to read into things that aren't there. If you're making that argument i would agree with you we do need to be careful but there are shadows in the bible all right if you look at what jesus said my god my god why hast thou which is being interpreted my god my god why hast thou forsaken me at the crucifixion you understand so it's a shadow that's what that is Anyway, I hope this video has been a blessing to you. Like I said, I want to keep it short and I'm going to let it go here, okay? God bless. And by the way, guys, let me know if you have any questions for me. If you want me to tear apart a particular topic that like, that the works heretics bring up or something about the rapture that you want answered, just let me know, okay? And I'll make a video about it. I, I, I know my videos are kind of dry, you know, they're... They're, they're long-winded and stuff, but I try to make sure that I get every single detail possible. I don't like to leave anything out because when I was a new Christian, I had to go to like hundreds of different teachers to try and figure out what was going on. And, you know, I, I was reading the Bible too, but I just, I didn't have the wisdom at that point. I was a babe in Christ and there was so many people saying so many different things. And it was, when I started this channel, I said, I want to be the one that doesn't leave somebody with more questions than answers. And I know that I'm not perfect. I know it's not all about intellect. I know I have to yield to the spirit, but that's what I'm doing here. That's why my videos are all like 40, 30 minutes long, because I'm trying to give you every single detail. Okay. I don't want to leave things out. And I'm not saying that I've successfully done that. I might, you might still have questions. I just, I'm not saying that I'm the best teacher in the world. I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody else. And by all means, you should watch more than just me. Like you got other good, there's good preachers out there. Mr. Christian, Tim Henderson. And the list goes on. But that's why I do this. Okay? God bless.